Hello everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to create app registration in Azure Active Directory for Dynamics 365 platform. In addition to this, I'm going to explain you how to enable automatic deployment of Dynamics using this app registration. Now, I know that this is not the most exciting topic in the world, but it can be quite, quite difficult to um, manage Microsoft way of uh, registering the application and enabling you uh, to have uh, automatic deployments uh, of your solution between different environments. So now what I have here is I have three different instances uh, in my tenant. So one is a development, the other one is test, and the third one is a production. Now obviously uh, my goal is that I develop my solutions, my product inside the development system. Then afterwards I'm going to deploy to the test system, which is obviously the system that is being used for testing purposes. And when everyone is happy with a test, I can go ahead and deploy my solutions to the production system. Now, this is quite cool. And um, the only problem is how to connect between those two systems. So in order to connect between those systems, you need to, do, uh, you need to make something which is called app registration in your Active Directory. Now, you can navigate to portal azure.com and you can go to the Azure Active Directory directly here, making sure that you're on the right tenant and everything. And then just navigate to app registrations here and click new registration. I already have two, as you may see. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to choose the accounts in any organizational directory and I'm going to choose the name. The name is going to be demo app registration in my case. I'm not going to put any redirect URL. I'm just going to click register button and give it a second. Great. So now I have the app registration. I have the application ID and I have um, essentially everything that I, that I need for the application uh, to run, but I need to manage my API permissions. So I'm going to go to API permissions and there is a button add a permission. I'm just going to click the button and I can already see here Dynamics uh, CRM, and, but you can also just uh, search for Dataverse and you're going to get exactly uh, the same thing. Make sure to click on Delegated Permissions and choose User Impersonation and click Add Permission. Now, after you did this, maybe you naively think that you're done, but you're actually not because what you need additionally is you need to manage your uh, certificates and secrets. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to create a new client secret by clicking the plus button and uh, I can make some description about it and then the expiration time. So I'm just going to click add button here as well and the DevOps, sorry, portal Azure is going to give me a new secret. Now, uh, Make sure that you're copying the, uh, the, the string from the value, not from the secret ID, because obviously this is just the ID of this secret, nothing else. So let me just copy this and put this in a notepad. I will delete this afterwards, so this is completely fine if you see it. Uh, afterwards, I'm just going to also copy the, the client ID, which is right here. Okay. And this is the application ID. This is secret. And what's the last thing? Tenant ID. Okay. Is this. This is essentially everything you need to do your app registration. One more thing which you can do is if you're trying to access, um, if you're trying to connect to Dynamics 365, with the, with the connection string, which contains username and password. You will need also to create application ID URL, and you can do this by clicking application ID URL here, and just click the button set here and just save this. It's not crucial for the, for the whole uh, service connection in the, in the DevOps. So this is the first part, and now you might think you're done, you, you have the access and everything, but you're actually not. And the second part is that you will go now to Power Platform um, Admin Center. And um, in this center, you, I will just go to the development environment and I'm going to click on the settings button. Going to the settings button, 
I will have the option users plus permissions, which I'm going to expand. And here I'm getting the option to have application users. So I'm going to choose this one as well. And now the beautiful button set up app, uh, set up, up user is showing up. So I'm going to click this guy and I can choose add an app and I'm going to choose my demo app registration, click add business unit development, big company security roles. I'm just going to use a system administrator, um, which is going to be used to essentially deploy solutions from one place to another. This guy is right here. So saving this, pressing the create button is going to create my application user. So relatively simple process, let's say, but if you go to Microsoft documentation, this step, this exactly the step of registering this with your Power Platform is, is missing. And now let's try to do one more thing. I'm going to try to do the same for the, for the test environment. I'm going to use exactly the same um, user, in this case, the app registration. So I'm choosing this one again. So business unit, now it's a test. And uh, if I remember it was down, so save and create, give it a minute. Hopefully it won't need a real minute. Let's see. Okay, we have created a new app, uh, new use app user inside the Dynamics. Okay, what is our next step? So, in order to deploy solutions from one system to another, we can use. Um, something automatic, right? We really don't want to export solution and import solution uh, manually using the, the Power Apps. This would be very time consuming and, and not effective at all. So what we want to do is we want to automate the whole process and therefore we need to use DevOps. And I have already uh, opened the DevOps and it is right here. So I'm just going to open my Dynamics example project. It is completely empty project. There is nothing in it. And uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to create a new service connection. Now you will need a service connection in order to build your pipeline. So let me just go to the pipeline and I'm just going to click a create pipeline and I'm going to use a classic editor because it's going to fulfill my requirements fairly simple. Using the classic editor, I, I don't care about any of this. I'm just going to go with the empty job. And what I want to add here is a step which is being called Power, Power Platform Tool Installer. So if you don't have this in your uh, DevOps organization, install it. This is by Microsoft. So I'm going to add this one and I can choose the export solution option here. Great. So as you see here, if I go to service principle or any of those, I don't have any, any service connection yet. So how do I create a service connection? I can just open a new tab, go into the project settings. And here I have an option saying service connections. Now I can create a new service connection. And what I have here is a power platform. So I'm going to click next. And now it is time for me to write a couple of details. The details which I gathered from those tabs. So the application ID, uh, the secret that I copied, the tenant ID, etc., etc. So those are the key information that I need. Obviously, what I do have is I have my beautiful notepad where I store all the information. So I'm going to copy the secret. I'm going to copy the application ID and I'm going to copy the tenant, which is also needed. Now for the server URL, I honestly have no idea what it is at the moment. So what I can do is I can just uh, right here inside the development solution or I can just go here and choose development solution, open environment, and then I'm going to have my URL. Okay. Oops. So let me just expand this one server url is here 
um, and the DApp registration, we're going to call it dev registration. I'm going to grant access permissions to all pipelines and I'm going to click save button. Perfect. So now if I just refresh this list, I should have one thing which is called dev registration. So now the Power Platform will know how to connect on which system, in this case development system, and it will try to export uh, the solution and the solution that I'm targeting uh, this time is a web solution. Great. So I'm going here and I'm just going to write as a string web solution. That's it. And now what I can also do, I can essentially uh, put uh, the, the question is where to where to store uh, this file. So I can store this file uh, in the artifact uh, staging. So meaning that I will also have to publish my artifact. And this is going to be this step. So by default, it's, it's putting me into the pipeline workspace. So I can try this variable. Let's see, is it going to work as expected? And uh, web, uh, web resource solution is going to be my artifact name. Great. I'm just going to say this one is going to be export. Um, okay, in this case, it's I'm using really the solution name. Um, let me just see what kind of pipeline do I have, Windows uh, 2019. So I'm just going to save and queue. And I'm going to pause the video because it might take a bit of a time until it gets uh, executed. So as you may see, my pipeline is finally green. I'm able to export the web solution. And if I just click on the agent job one, I will see all the steps that were executed in order to uh, make this uh, job green. Now, obviously, you can already see that I have changed the pipeline a bit. And this is because obviously my pipeline was not green immediately. It was actually red for a couple of times until I, uh, until I haven't solved all the issues. And what I have done is, let me just edit this pipeline. Um, what I did is essentially in the export solution, I specified that I'm going to put the output file to actually the root repository of the of the source code to be named to web solution.zip. So everything that is getting exported is going to be packed to this file. Now, what I did again is I went uh, and I use copies file step and I searched through every single item that I found in the root repository. Again, you see it's not specified here and my code is, is uh, empty. Um, and I copy all this content to the artifact staging directory, which is being picked up by publish pipeline artifact and is being published as the artifact, which we can use afterwards. So now if I just go to pipelines and export web, the last one, I will see that I have uh, created artifacts and my artifact is called web resource solution. And if I expand it as I will see that I have two items here uh, readme uh, md and web resources uh, web solution zip uh, which is essentially my solution now what i want to do next is obviously i created this release and uh, now what i want to do is uh, i created a build my result of this export is this zip file and now i will create a release so to create a release you go to releases and i can say new pipeline and now I will again go with the empty job and I'm going to click on an artifact. And from the artifact, I'm going to choose the export web, build pipeline. This is all fine, I don't care. I'm going to make it uh, as a continuous deployment trigger, meaning every time when that build uh, finalizes, I'm going to trigger the release pipeline as well. And now we can rename this one to the test stage. And in the jobs here, I can again uh, use something very similar, which is called Power Platform Tool Installer. This is bringing me all the packages that I need. And now using Power Platform uh, Import Solution option, I can click Add a button and I can choose the solution file from my uh, already published artifact, which is a this file. Great. Obviously, what I'm missing is a service connection. So now we need to build another service connection for this fine gentleman. So Let's go to service connections here. I'm going to click again, service connection, use the power platform, go to the next. 
uh, go to server URL. Okay, we can do this the last as we did in the last step. And I'm just going to copy uh, this information that I was using before using app ID and using uh, secret. And I'm going to call this test registration, granting access. And the last but not least, a server part. And let me just find it real quick. It's here. So I'm just going to go to the environments, go to the test one, open environment, copy. That's it. Here it is. Let's save this. Perfect. So now we can create a new service connection and we can go back to the release pipeline. And if I just switch to service principle, I can choose now test registration. And uh, this is about it. The only thing else that we can do is maybe publish everything, but I don't even want to do this now, like publish customizations. I, it's just important for me that the connection is really working. And let's say deploy web resources that deploy web resources is uh, the name of the pipeline. Great. So let me go to the releases and no deployments found. I can create a release and I will just do this now. Release one release is being triggered. I'm wondering, is this going to work as expected? This time I'm not, I'm not, I'm living dangerously. I'm not going to break it. Okay. Failed one job. Okay. I have to choose the correct, um, the correct agent because I don't have anything on this one. I didn't, Microsoft didn't allow me yet to use the hosted pipeline. So I have to write them. Uh, I will use my default hosted pool and let me just create release again. So those kind of errors are, are quite common for the start. Uh, so when you're building your first pipeline, uh, first pipelines, and especially if you're not paying enough attention as I'm not doing right now. So let's see. This step might take a bit longer until it downloads everything. Obviously, import solution might take as well a bit longer. But while it's running, I want to show you that in this test environment, I don't even have a web solution yet. So when this steps finalizes, I should be able to, you know, get this, get this solution inside my, uh, inside my environment. So this still runs. So I will do a small pause of the video and, uh, we'll continue as soon as it's uh, ready. And finally pipeline is completed. It took some time to do the import of solution, but at the end of the day, it really imported uh, solution successfully. Again, I was not uh, able to do this. Uh, from one try, I had the timeout on the import of solution, which happens, especially if there are parallel imports of the solution in Dynamics. But you got the picture. This is essentially how would you use a service connection uh, when deploying your um, code from one system to another. And we can just quickly go to the Power Apps, to the test I have already refreshed, obviously, the, the, the list of solutions. And if I click on a web solution, you will see that, um, you know, everything is, is, is there. We have a tables, we have a web resource, um, everything that was in one uh, system. Now it arrived to another system. And every time when we do the update of solution, we can just click a button and automatically deploy everything what is uh, needed for us. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I know this one was not the most exciting one. I wish you a lot of hope, uh, a lot of uh, luck with uh, building your, your dynamic solutions and just be aware not to put anything in a plain text, especially some sensitive data as a password, secret, etc. So I showed them in the video just for the, yeah, just to demonstrate how this looks like. So just be careful with those and use libraries or key vaults or anything like this to save data. Uh, safely. So thank you very much once more and uh, yeah, have fun deploying.